After the discovery of an ancient church on Isla de Estrella in the Mediterranean Sea, archaeologist Alan Harris and his wife Amelia traveled there on a research project from America. Though the church lay in ruins now, the followers of this church used to perform miracles, bring the dead back to life, and perhaps somewhere hidden inside this church was the cross of the Savior, the cross on which he was crucified. Although this church meant no more than a project for Alan, everything changed after his wife passed away in a tragic event. Heartbroken and in desperateness to bring his wife back to life, Alan set out to solve the mystery of this church and began searching for the cross of the Savior. It was late at night, raining profusely. But having found what he had eagerly been searching for, He slowly placed her body on the cross. Beside his wife, Alan closed his eyes and earnestly began his prayers. I intercede by this holy cross. Let her come to life. From the bottom of his heart, Alan wished for nothing but Amelia to return to him. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind seeped through the broken windows of the church, blowing out all the candles. In the darkness, Alan slowly took out his lighter and lit the fire. Bringing the light closer to Amelia, Alan begged to the Lord, Please, Lord, let her awake. That's when Alan froze, seeing Amelia's lifeless pallor take color as she opened her eyes. You're back. Thank heavens. Thank 
Thank you, Lord. What is happening? A snake bit you. We thought we lost you forever. In fact, we even buried you. What? Yes, Amelia. I couldn't lose you so soon. After your death, I started reading that journal, and I discovered this hidden chamber. You were right. This is the cross of the Savior. It was here all along. It brought you back to me. What am I going to tell the villagers now? They saw I buried you. No, I know, I know. I'll say I went to visit you on this rainy night and I heard a noise from the grave. You never died. But Amelia, from now you'll have to keep your distance from them. You know how these villagers are. They're superstitious. If they find out about this cross, our lives could be in danger. It can be used for good to serve mankind. But just imagine how dangerous it can be in the wrong hands, and who knows what it's capable of doing. It's like a link with the Lord on Earth. Seeing Amelia so quiet, perhaps overwhelmed by everything, Alan stood by her and sighed. I'll never let anything happen to you again. It was late that night when Alan and Amelia reached home. Alan quickly got her a blanket. Alan, I'm hungry. Alan quickly made some food and watched as Amelia had her fill. Before she went to bed looking exhausted. Staring at her wound, Alan was surprised seeing the snake bite seem to have completely healed. But the first thing the following morning, he took her to the doctor. This is no less of a miracle, Mr. Harris. You are very fortunate. As far as I can assume, the snake venom had only caused her to go into a deep coma. The tests have come back positive. She's in the process of healing. And the child? The child is fine. The villagers were shocked knowing about Amelia. But Alan did what he needed to do to keep her safe. Though Amelia was still quite weak and needed to heal. Alan never felt so much at peace and content with himself. He had finally found his faith. That afternoon, returning from the market, Alan brought home carbolic acid and used it around the house to ward off snakes. Ever since their return, Amelia had been distant with the villagers. Now and then people dropped by to meet her or brought over the sick for advice. But not only did Amelia not meet them, she didn't even give them medicine. Much of the time she kept to herself, quietly lingering around the house or taking frequent naps. However, much of the night, she would be wide awake, walking around the house in insomnia. Alan stayed back at home to look after her. It was one evening on his way back from the market. He was startled when someone got hold of him, shaking him by the collar. Alan stared at the same man that had been following him. What are you doing? What do you want? What have you done? You think she is really your wife? You think that child in her womb is really your child? 
You think it was the savior who was hung on that? You think it was the savior who was hung on that? Alan pushed him away in shock and turned to go home. Never follow me again, you heretic. As Alan walked on ignoring him, the man called out. Even if someone innocent was crucified on it, it doesn't change the fact of what it is, what it stands for. Hearing him, Alan stopped and turned. What is it? It was used to cause pain, suffering, death. Leave from here and don't come here again. With that, Alan turned and headed home. He couldn't understand this man's problem. Stepping inside, Alan found Amelia waiting for him by the door. Alan, what's going on? Who was he? No one, just some heretic against excavation. You can't reason with these people. There was nothing in the world that could make Alan regret what he did, no matter what anyone said. Amelia was with him again, his child was with him again, and he would do anything to protect them. Time went on, the news eventually settled, and things went back to normal. Alan became occupied with his work, and Amelia chose to stay back at home. It was a few days later one morning. Alan went to the fax shop at the marketplace to send his feedback to America. When he noticed some men huddling around. What's the matter? Have you heard what happened? There was a priest in town who was murdered last night. Priest? Who? It was on the news. in a devastating condition, crucified in his backyard. Whoever did it set the house on fire. There's nothing left but ruins. What? Crucified him? Though Alan didn't think so greatly of this man, he was shocked by what happened. Finishing up his work, Alan hurried home. But when he got inside, he found the bungalow empty. What's that noise? Hearing a strange noise from the backyard, Alan walked out to find Amelia with a live chicken. She was twisting its head around as the animal crowed in pain. Amelia, what are you doing? Leave that poor thing, you're torturing it. I was going to cook it for you. Like this? I didn't know how to. Give it to me, I'll do it in a human way. Dinner was quiet that night. Alan thought he'd rather not tell Amelia about the news. Everything had already been so traumatic. The two went to bed that night, and Alan soon fell asleep. But as usual, sometime in the middle of the night, he noticed Amelia slip out on her nightly walks. A 
As time went on, Amelia's condition seemed to get better. Unlike before, she was starting to interact with the villagers again and Alan sometimes saw her playing with the children. Seven-year-old boy suddenly gone missing. Isn't that the same boy? It was some days later. While in the marketplace, Alan was shocked reading the headlines on the newspaper. He has seen Amelia play with this boy some days ago. But putting the matter as a mere coincidence, he went home. Reaching there, he found Amelia playing with another one of the neighboring children. Seeing him, the girl ran off and Amelia came to him. You've been meeting the villagers lately. How are they treating you? Fine. I was thinking of telling you, perhaps you shouldn't go out at night. Some strange things have been happening around here. All right. Alan never liked Amelia going out so late. It was always better safe than sorry. But oddly enough, in the middle of the night, Alan was surprised seeing Amelia leaving the room. At first, he thought she had gone to the bathroom, but almost half an hour passed and she wasn't back. Alan hurried out to check, surprised to find the back door open. He immediately went to grab his flashlight to head out. But as soon as he turned, he saw Amelia. Amelia, where were you? Nowhere. What's in your hand? Alan stared at a bloody knife held tight behind her back. I couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd prepare your breakfast early. I was cutting meat. All right, you should get some rest. Relieved, yet for some reason stressed, Alan went back to bed and tried to sleep. The next morning, when Alan came to the kitchen to grab breakfast, he was confused seeing the toast and marmalade. I thought you made meat. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry, I'll make it. No, it's okay. Alan wanted to give Amelia the benefit of doubt. But for the past days, he couldn't help but find her behavior quite abnormal. She was nothing like what she used to be. She was always so passive and quiet, almost as if she were hiding something. Body of missing young girl found in devastating condition in the jungles. Police are warning people to stay alert and safeguard their children suspecting this could have been a ritual sacrifice. Just two days later, when Alan read the headlines of the newspaper, recognizing the young girl he had seen Amelia with, he didn't know what to think anymore. Coincidences happened once, not twice. What was going on in this town? And who was doing this? For some reason, Alan had a feeling the priest had something to do with this. He was found crucified. Who could do something like that? So that evening, Alan decided to visit the old ruins of the man's house, hoping possibly he could find something. Reaching there, he was devastated by its condition. There was nothing left but ashes. Alan walked around hopelessly, but there was no way anyone could solve this mystery. Until Alan noticed something glimmer in the coal. Alan 
Helen your home. Amelia, are you bored of our marriage? Why would you ask me something like that? You're not wearing your ring anymore. Oh, I think I lost it somewhere. Where did you lose your ring? In the backyard while I was cooking? Is that so? Placing the ring down, Alan sighed. Then what was it doing in the priest's house? As soon as Amelia heard the question, she froze. She walked towards him. Alan, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you. You brought me back. But now, I was suffering for centuries. All this time, all I wished was if only I could return. And you gave me that opportunity to return. For centuries? Who are you? Where is Amelia? <laughs> Amelia chuckled as she said. Now, that much explanation I owe you. Amelia left this world serving humanity, doing good. She's in a better place now. And this body, she doesn't need it. She didn't need to come back. I need it to come back. Seeing the menacing glare in her eyes, Alan realized what he had done. This wasn't his Amelia. She was something else. Something he had to finish. Alan immediately took out his knife and went to charge at her. But all of a sudden, he felt his body freeze. Amelia held her stomach. This baby, he deserves to live. She said, as an evil smirk appeared on her lips. Alan felt his body begin to lift. As Amelia threw him against the wall. I didn't want to do this, but you have learned too much. Archaeologist Alan Harris tragically passed away in an accident whilst on a research project on the Mediterranean. He is survived by his wife and child. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.